The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked this question to all of his disciples, not just Peter. Today, he also asked the same question to you and I. How would you answer him? Five years ago, at one of my very first formation classes for the diaconate, Father Jim Golka posed the same question to us candidates. I quickly answered, very similar to Peter, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I was very quick to answer, but was this answer my real answer? Was it the same answer I would come up with the next time someone asked me? Was it the same answer I would give today? Was it the answer that truly drove my beliefs and my actions? Since then, I've really had to contemplate that question and come up with my own true and real answer. Because that answer is not a simple one. It's a very personal and inner one. Its real meaning connects with the deepest part of our soul. It defines who we are and how we act. It defines our beliefs and our choices. Who do you say that I am? Before you can tell others the answer, you must first know the answer yourself. You must spend some time contemplating this question and coming up with your own answer. Not just a script that you can quickly tell somebody, but what you truly believe. That is crucial because it will be your guiding compass that will keep you heading toward Jesus and eternity with him. Life is full of obstacles, challenges, trials and temptations. Just five minutes ago, I found out that one of the students at my school died from cancer. It's around every corner. Jesus knew this. He was tempted in the desert. Even Jesus experienced the death of a close friend whom he wept for. Even Jesus was mocked, spit on, and rejected. Even Jesus suffered was tortured and crucified. We need him as our guiding compass to help us overcome these times and to know which direction to choose to go in life. He is the true compass that will guide us in the right direction. He has shown us this path to his Father, 
and he will show us the way back onto the right path to salvation. For he knows the plans he has for us. There have been and will be many times throughout our lives that we all will get lost and stray from the path. I must admit it happened for many years to me. To me. I was lost. And I've heard of so many people just two days ago at the football game of people telling me their stories of being lost and their pride in finding their way back. But just in the story of the prodigal son, God the Father will welcome us back with open and loving arms. But just like the prodigal son, we must look to return to him. This is not always easy because when we are in the midst of a storm or in a time of trial and crisis, it is difficult to see a clear path through it. It's difficult to keep the faith and have hope. When you come to a cross in the road, it is challenging to know which direction to head. It is challenging to keep hope and to keep the faith. But Jesus is there to guide us, carry us, and to give us strength. But we must be able to recognize him and his words. In order to recognize him, we must know him. Who do you say that I am? We must spend time with him and the words that he gave us so that we can build that relationship with him. We have those opportunities each and every day to get to know him. Two days ago, I found myself in one of these deep deep times of personal despair and discouragement, a time of fading hope. But there were signs that Christ was giving me and that he was all around me, that he was in front of me, and possibly he was carrying me. One morning, this morning, as I walked into a classroom, the teacher posed a simple question to her children as they were brainstorming what they were going to write. Who do you look up to that you can trust and talk to? Immediately on the board, I could see that students had written, had told her, Jesus and God. Another 30 minutes later, as I walked into another classroom, the teacher was talking to students about a similar question. And she had asked them, who can you talk to when you have times of trouble? Simple eight-year-olds were able to tell her, Jesus. An hour later, as I was talking to a teacher, she was telling me about that because of Facebook, the death of this young man I mentioned earlier was on the minds of her students. And so she talked with the students about death. Very quickly, a student mentioned about heaven and a belief in life after death. Later on that night, as I was listening to music, a song came on talking about how we're in this together, how we can change the world together. A song of encouragement. So in a time of deep despair, some questioning, a lack of faith or hope, Christ is there. We have to keep our eyes and our ears open and look for him. And once again, we need to know him. Who do you say that I am? Jesus knew how difficult it would be be for us sinners to keep our faith in a world full of evil, temptation, disaster, challenges, and trials. To help us during these times, he gave himself up for us so that he could give himself to us. In just a few minutes, he will give himself to us. We will approach the altar and receive him his body, his blood. This is one opportunity that thankfully in this parish we have each and every day, even on Saturday mornings now. It's an opportunity to stay close to him, to find our way back to him, to develop a close relationship with him so that we can recognize him and his ways. It is a chance to check the compass to make sure we are headed in the right direction. Each day, we also have the opportunity to go to reconciliation, to improve our relationship with him, and to get back on the right path. 
Every morning at 7.30, we have that opportunity. By confessing our faults that have damaged our relationship with Him, and by asking for His forgiveness, then Jesus is able to pour His mercy upon us to heal our relationship with Him. Who do you say that I am? God bless you as you search for this answer.